Good afternoon, families. I know you all have had a long day. Is, some of you have been here since 7.30 this morning, but we thank you for hanging in there with us. I'm Carla O'Connor, and I'm the director of Bull Green Pathways, and I just want to say congratulations. Some of you started with us three years ago, some of you started with us five years ago. You committed a lot of time. You committed even more time online than you expected to when you started this program. You made it through a pandemic, but you have been admitted and you have choices. And because we know you have choices, our goal is to make sure that you think seriously about choosing Michigan. And if we are really successful, you will choose Michigan um, in the end. And so what we wanted to do today, in addition to all the wonderful things you've heard about University of Michigan, we want to let you give you great, um, clear insight into what else you get as a part of being members of the Wolverine Pathways family and the sort of resources and supports that will carry you through till graduation. And so that's what this session is about. It's also an opportunity to meet um, graduates of our program who are here and thriving at the University of Michigan so that you can understand uh, that their experiences as your peers. Um, we also have partners with us today, but I want to do, if you come here, we want to make sure you really know the faces of people who will be here to support you. So I'm going to have some uh, staff come up front just to introduce themselves quickly. Uh, 
um, we have a program that's called Success Connects. And that program connects you to success. And it includes a lot of different things, including some one-on-one -on -one coaching. So your coach gets to know you, gets to know the pathway that you want to take, the things that may be challenging for you. And you're seeing this person like every three weeks. And so you really get to know them. They get a chance to know you. And they know the things that you don't know. So they can help you to navigate in ways that you need to so that you can optimize your success as a student here. Um, but the office also has a number of other kinds of things like tutoring. Um, we have uh, study tables where you can come together with other students and study. Uh, we do a number of different programs that focus on uh, things related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so we're just going to tell you a little bit about the office very quickly. We have an amazing team of staff and students that work very closely um, with the different programs that we put on and specifically with uh, Wolverine Pathway so that you join and create a community once you're here. So again, you're, you're special to us and we want to make sure that we make those connections so that you can be successful. So I'm going to ask the team to come up. Uh, and they're going to do a quick presentation. And you're up. I can see how magical they are. <laughs> so, um, and I'm going to turn it over to them and have them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit more about what we have on. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, we are so excited to be here with you all today and get to share a little bit about our program. My name is Samarawi Kasai, and I am a success coach and a program coordinator in OME. And hopefully, I will be your success coach if you choose to attend the University of Michigan and participate in Success Connects. And I'm so excited to speak with you all today and also to have our wonderful Pathways student program coordinators speak to you all as well. And I will let them introduce themselves. Hi, everybody. My name is Anina. Um, I am a Pathways student program coordinator. I graduated from the WP program uh, from the Southfield Detroit cohort, um, and I'm currently a graduating student. So. Hi, my name is Lakira Keys. I'm also from the Southfield cohort. I graduated in 2021, and I'm excited to talk to you guys today. <laughs>
my freshman year, I know I, I struggled a little with my Spanish class, so I was able to get a tutor through Success Connect. And also this summer, I'm studying for an internship at a law firm, but I needed resources to finance my living here. And my Success Connect introduced me to several scholarships that, was, that is going to allow me to stay here this summer. And so we have Aware Me as Big Umbrella and Success Connects as a program of Lead It. And then Anina and LaCairo will also talk about the specific work that they do to continue building the Warrior Pathways community. Okay, so on campus here, we have the Warrior Pathways campus community. And with that, we put together events that contribute to professional development, academic academic progress, um, as well as like leisure activities just to decompress, de-stress um, throughout the year. Thus far, we've had networking events, ice cream socials, um, nostalgia nights where we watch like Disney movies and things like that, just to give you an idea of the things that we do. Um, um, so me and Nina and another SBC um, finalist, we put on events every month. Um, like Nina had mentioned, we just had a Disney nostalgia night where we came and we just watched Disney movies. And it's just a way for us to connect with other Wolverine Pathways alum and come together and talk with like-minded people. And um, up here we have our Instagram if you want to scan the QR code. And if you come here to the University of Michigan, you will be able to attend these events. Um, this month, we're having our uh, end of the year celebration. We're gonna have boba, massage chairs, and yeah, t-shirts and things like that. Just different events to bring the community together. And then we will very briefly discuss some of the other, oh, I can go back. Okay. You can also find us on Instagram at WP Campus Community. So some of the other programs in our office is MConnect, which is a program for transfer students from some of our partnership community colleges. We have MClick, which is men of color leading in the classroom. If you have any, if you're interested in education or you're not sure if you're interested in education, this is a great program to learn more about what it means to be a man of color in the classroom. We have support for undocumented students. There is a dedicated student org called SCOPE to work on undocumented initiatives. We also have SAMI grants, so this could provide funding if you would like to have any sort of event or attend a conference that is both academic and multicultural in nature. In nature excuse me. We also want to honor our Native American community through the Dance for Mother Earth powwow that OAMI puts on in collaboration with the Native American Student Association. OAMI also coordinates the annual Dr. Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. Symposium keynote lecture every January. And we also have graduation celebrations. So this might feel like it's a long way off. It's a little bit sooner than you might think but we really like to honor our students by having seven graduations for different backgrounds and ethnicities. And we also are uh, planning our Juneteenth symposium as well. What questions do we have?
Thank you all so much. So I'm going to ask our graduates uh, here at, 11, at the University of Michigan to join us up here, and I'm going to transition some slides while they get set. So um, it's wonderful to introduce you all. Actually, they're going to introduce themselves to you. So these are all graduates from, of our program, and I'll actually slide there. Um, they graduated from different years, so have had different experiences here. I'm going to have each of them tell you a little bit about themselves, and then we're going to open up some questions that I've asked them to consider before we start, and then we want to make sure we have time for your questions. Hi, my name is Rodrigo Sandino. I'm currently a sophomore here at the University of Michigan. I am pursuing a major in economics and with a minority in mathematics. I'll also say, um, hi everyone, buenas tardes. My name is Jamie Lopez Garcia, pronouns she, her, hers. I am a senior. I graduated in 2019 from the Wolverine Pathways program in the Detroit cohort, the first ever Detroit cohort actually. Um, and also, I am a, I'm double majoring in sociology and organizational studies with, a, with minors in education and community action and social change. Hi everyone, my name is Kaden Hawkins and I'm a first year here at the University of Michigan. I was a part of the Implementing Cohort and I just graduated in the first year, obviously. And I'm studying neuroscience right now and my pronouns are she. Yo, what's good with everybody? My name is Chris Lenoy. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I graduated from Pathways in 2018. So I was part of the very first cohort that ever started Pathways at the Southfield site. Um, I'm a fifth year senior. I'll be finishing at the end of this month, graduating with a degree in applied exercise science and a concentration in business management. Uh, we'll move on to the last. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Thomas Rosenzo. I'm a freshman. Um, I was in the Ape Slaney cohort. And my time over in Pathways. I graduated in 2022, and I'm majoring in industrial and operations engineering. Okay, so the first question is an easy question, right? We want our panelists to tell to tell you why choose Michigan, given their experiences here. Why choose Michigan? I feel like Michigan has a large community here where you won't feel left out. There are, as I said earlier, there are a wide variety of awards that you can join that you can be that makes you feel a part of the community, something that you probably haven't felt prior to coming here to Michigan, and it's a really new experience and a refreshing one to be here. Uh, you will definitely find a community here, here in Michigan, and I believe that this is an opportunity that you should take. From the perspective of someone that was undecided for a while, well, I came in really had strong pre-med, and I was like very dead set on that. Um, many of you might like also be like, oh, I'm very dead set on one thing. Um, from the perspective of like changing my mind and then deciding, you know, like I'm undecided, Michigan is a very good place to be because no matter where you go, the, the programs are like ranked very highly. Um, and I think that that's what I've appreciated here, just having those options. I was in all of your same exact position last year at these campus tours and campus days. And I remember I was on one, I was in one panel, so I was in an audience. And what one of the people on the panel said really stuck with me, and I really realized it when I got here, but you should choose Michigan because we, if people just like walk around the campus of Michigan, walk around any building or on the diet, you will see everybody smiling at almost all times. Like you'll always be able to point out somebody here who's just smiling in a good mood, happy to be here. And I think that that's something that just kind of happens to everyone at the time of Michigan here. Like you'll be happy here. And I think that that's just a really, really common thing and why I always see smile, why I always see people that are enjoying themselves because this is a really, it's a, it's a great place to be and I'm, Really glad that all of you had the chance to come and be here. And you know, if you come to Michigan, you'll always be smiling. So, thank <laughs> you. Yeah, so I agree with everything that's been said so far. I don't have to belabor the access to the resources that we already have, as already been said. Highly ranked programs, programs everywhere you look for, everything that you need. I guess what I would like to touch on is being a part of Pathways. When you choose Michigan, you come in with an advantage that 
can sometimes be taken for granted, which is you come here already knowing other students that you run pathways with, which makes your freshman experience a lot easier. Like even if you may not be the closest buddy buddy with everybody that you graduated pathways with, that confidence of knowing people will encourage you to be out more. You'll be at different buildings, different events a lot more, which will make you uh, meet other people and meet your own friends. So that's just a major thing that'll make it a lot easier when you come here. <coughs> yes, um, I like to touch on a lot of things that the panelists said. Um, I think one of the great things about Michigan is its versatility. Um, I know for me, like Michigan was really the only school I think I ever wanted to go to because I saw a community that was just so vibrant, um, where every student it seemed is passionate about something. Um, and I think for a community of students that's very like-minded, like the students moving pathways, I think that's extremely crucial um, for our own success and for finding community. Um, that being said, like I love just I love the environment surrounding Michigan. All of the staff are just so passionate about students learning, um, and everyone is interested in something. And there's just so many different clubs and organizations um, just to join and dive into. I know for, I know for myself, I'm a big musician, so um, I'm a member of the Men's Glee Club of Michigan, and I'm also a member of the Acapella Group. Um, but there's so many other like organizations to join to just to really supplement your academics in Michigan. So Tom has started telling us about some of the communities he's a part of. If other panelists can share, what communities have you become a part of and made home for you here in Michigan? So uh, one of the, so one of the um, uh, communities that you mentioned earlier was Scope. Uh, I am a, I'm currently as a friend right now, I am a co-lead here at, at Scope, and I, I enjoy my time working with them. Future events that we can have later on, and I hope to not just like stay within scope, but also branch out to other programs here at the University of Michigan. I won't believe her scope. I'm, I'm wearing the sweater today. I'm wearing the scope sweater. Um, <laughs> it's a really great community for undocumented and documented students on campus, and also just allies. Um, so scope is one of them. La Casa is also an organization that has helped me a lot. La Casa is a central Latinx student organization on campus that has a lot of different events that happen throughout the year. And I appreciate them not only for like giving me a space to like meet new people and like have a space to connect with my culture. When I got here, you know, I was I was speaking less Spanish, I was missing the food that my mom made. So like La Casa was a way to engage my culture still here. And also like they provide a really good like leadership development opportunities for like planning these kinds of events, getting programming and event planning experience. Um, so, I think those are the two main ones for me. Um, when I think of the word community, I kind of think of the word home. And what really feels like home to me on this campus is this one building called Trotter Multicultural Center. And so Trotter is a space for um, really groups, minority groups of all backgrounds to just gather and do homework, eat, talk, have meetings. Like there's really no limit to what Trotter can be used for. And um, I think that the community that I found there is the black community. And I think Chris will have more to say about this because he's actually on the board himself of the Black Student Union. But I think that the Black Student Union is a really big community that I found here at Michigan. And I would say to every black student that's incoming to join the Black Student Union, because even if you think that you, like it might not be for you, or you think that it might not be your space, you might not know anybody there, that's how you get to know people, and that's how you get to know um, really how this black community works here. And I think that because I was able to, you know, become a part of that in my freshman year. I have like built relationships now that are going to last me through the rest of my years here and that will probably last me after that as well. Yeah, so like uh, she just said, Trotter is building that's right down the street. You take maybe a three minute walk that way and you have this building that exists due to black activism. You know, it's based on the old Trotter building which was built on Washington, which used to be basically just a black center building where Students would, you know, have parties, uh, have a bunch of food all the time, rent out rooms and sleep overnight and things like that. And now it's grown into a space that's a multicultural space where, like she said, all minorities have a safe haven in that building. And I spend all my time in that building. If I'm not in class, I'm in trial. I might need trying to go to like a black undergraduate kinesiology associate meeting or uh, a heads meeting, which is a war for black men, which I have on my heads meeting right now. And we have a sister war called Sister Sister where we go black homecoming every year. But yeah, the, the Black Student Union is really the most integral or 
word to the black community as we bring the community into Trotter all the time, every week, every year, just ever since I've been here. I'm the student advisor for the Black Student Union now, and I don't know where I would be without having the black community here, let alone all of the different ors that we have that make up our community. <clears throat> Yeah, so I already share a couple of communities that I'm a part of. I'm a part of the Men's Glee Club. Um, I'm also a part of the Club Group of Michigan. Um, and I'm also a part of one of the Christian fellowship groups at Michigan um, called Crew. Um, and being a part of those communities has really just been so integral to my success in Michigan. Um, in particular, having an outlet of like minded people from my faith has been um, definitely instrumental um, in getting through this first in getting through this first year. Um, and then having a community of artists, other creative people, um, <clears throat> has not only been great to really just have that musical outlet, but, but just the amount of connections that I've gained from being um, in those groups and from just talking to all the individuals who I've met and opportunities I've gotten to um, really see from all those organizations has been just instrumental and I would say that it's so hard to see, like going into it, but like looking back now, like I'm just so incredibly grateful for all the experiences I've had. So a number of our scholars here today had the opportunity um, and the privilege to be able to attend Summer Bridge or Summer CSP this this summer. Um, for any panelists who may have participated in Summer Bridge or Summer CSP. Can you give the audience a sense of how you experienced that program and what benefits it may have brought? Uh, so I was in Summer CSP, which is Summer CSP and Summer Bridge, we do everything pretty much together, so we kind of just call it all bridge, but uh, being a part of Summer CSP, Summer Bridge was probably the most fun I had like since I've been here, and, like the upper class when we're doing like bridge, gonna be the most fun. It's really beating those people. I didn't believe them. Like I was like, okay, I have more fun when I'm in class and stuff. But bridge was where I met the most people. That's where I made most of my friends. That's where we explored and learned the campus. That's where we really got comfortable with being on the campus. So when our freshman year really started that fall semester, we knew where everything was. We knew all the buildings. We knew where all the restaurants were. We knew each other, so we didn't feel alone. We had a sense of community built in already, and all we had to do was tap in with those upperclassmen to show us, oh, where do we have these meetings at? Where are these orders located? It took a lot of the pressures of being fresh on the campus and not knowing anybody and having to find people. It put me in a place where I already knew people coming in when I was a freshman when the semester started. Any other insights from anyone? I also did. So I want to make sure that the audience has time to ask questions, and I'm going to turn my mic over to um, Mo Maurice Trailer so he can get it around. But any questions from the audience? Hi. Um, so I had a question for both like the panelists and the um, um so what's the difference between the Trotter um, like Center and then like what they do? Um, so Trotter is, a phys well, they're both physical spaces. So you can go to Miami and you can go to Trotter. Trotter is a multicultural center and then they have a lot of meeting spaces. They have a lot of also events that happen throughout the year. But Miami is like a centralized, like where Success Connects is. Um, and also, yeah, that's how I would describe it. OME has like a lot of, they both have a lot of different events, but Trotter is like more of a physical, bigger building that has like study spaces as well. They're both like building. Like Trotter is a building, OME is an office within the student activities building that is like back there. But they do similar work, different events. Other questions? I know you all are tired. It has been a long day. She has another question. Sorry. No, no, do not, do not apologize. Um, so for people, because I also, like, I I live in Etsy, but, and like, people who live in Etsy come to Ann Arbor a lot, but like, I don't really know the campus that well. So for people who aren't like required to do the bridge program, can they still like apply to do it? Or is that like something? 
So I'm going to introduce <laughs> Erica Sanders. Erica is our Executive Director of Undergraduate Admissions. The short answer is no, but she'll be able to give you some additional context. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Please excuse my voice. Allergies. Um, so in terms of Summer Bridge, let me start off. Congratulations on your admission. I know it's been a long year. And certainly, yeah, you should feel very proud of So we've received just under 90,000 applications. So your admission to the university should be something, again, that you think of very specifically as an accomplishment for not only yourself, but for your families. Uh, for the students who are interested in Summer Bridge, the students are selected to the Summer Bridge program. Um, offers have gone out to students and they will let us know if they're accepting their placement there. Um, as the students indicated, often there's a push and pull, right, between the students that we've said, congratulations, and we'd like you to come in summer, and whatever they thought their plans were for summer. And so we'll find out over time. If you are a student who might be interested in Bridge, you certainly can contact our office, and I encourage you to contact the recruitment staff member in my office that you worked with. If you don't know, then you can just simply email me my email address is yale at umich.edu, so y-a-l-e at umich.edu. That's if you can't remember that, then contact whoever's your contact in Wilbury Pathways and they will get it to me. What we will do is at the end of April, so probably after April 17th, as we start to see if students have accepted their placement in Bridge, if we have space available, we will go back and look at students who said, I'm really interested. But first and foremost, we have to figure out if it's a good fit for you. It is an academic program to help bridge what we might see as something that wasn't offered to the student in their high school. So you're really interested in engineering, but they didn't offer calculus, they didn't offer physics, they didn't offer chemistry. Or as we know during the pandemic, they did, but it wasn't chemistry mm -hmm. and it wasn't calculus. Mm -hmm. And so we know that we have some work to do to make sure that whatever your aspirations are, we're not in your way. We want you to finish with whatever degree program you have your heart set on. And so the Summer Bridge program helps to even the playing field for students that I have information about the last class, the first year class that just finished. And so with the pandemic, it's helping us identify where there's a difference of what the school told you you were taking, how you achieved in the classroom, and how students then achieved at the university. Our goal is to make certain that students who had those experiences in their high schools aren't continuing to be put at a disadvantage when they get to the university, right? It's not your fault. You did the best you could, you probably got an A, but that A probably won't look the same here. And so the goal is to make certain you have the support, whether it's Success Connects or the Bridge Program to ensure that they have time to additionally provide that resource. So for some students that sounds very good, you didn't get it, hopefully you were given um, maybe an advising service in the fall called CSP. The difference is, the bridge program is housed in the Comprehensive Studies Advising Unit. So all of those students will continue in CSP in the fall. And for the students who are in Summer Bridge this year, you will have the ability to apply to a living learning program. So you'll be able to live with other Summer Bridge students in the fall and winter if you'd like as well. Not required to, but if you'd like to, they do have placements if you'd like to continue with that as well. So that's important to recognize. Um, but for students who didn't receive bridge, didn't receive CSP, and your thought is, I want all of that. Yes, it sounds great. Well, there's likely a program that we want you to think about that could, is likely a living learning program. So you probably, how many of you learned about the living learning programs this morning um, at campus day? So there was a fair and there's a space for you to walk around. So there's a living learning application that will come out from housing and you'll start to select that information of a living learning program. So if you're not in CSP and you're not in Bridge and you'd like a support, just an acclimation support, um, they provide tutoring and additional support services for students, those Michigan learning communities are the next piece of that. But if you want to talk about it and you still think, no, nope, I still like Summer Bridge, you can feel free to talk to the person um, and we'll bring pathways inside of their coordinator or you can contact me, happy to walk you through it. If we have space, we would love to take you, um, but we selected the students for Bridge. It is a community, and so there are students from all over the state and all over the country, and it's a cohort of about 350 students. So it's a close-knit group, and we want them to build community. We want them to be leaders on campus. We want them to get involved. 
and we want them to excel in their areas of academic interest. So they lead from the front. They're like little agents we deploy, as we think of it, that we think will be able to help support students all over campus because they got a leg up, as I think Chris indicated, uh, because they were here in the summer. But again, if your thought is, I want that too, we can do that for you, but it might be a living learning program because they might not have the courses in Bridge that you're ready for at this time. You might be on, be beyond the intro math course. You might be beyond, so you may have done dual enrollment and already taken first year English. So again, we try to place you first where the academic courses that are available will align with what you've taken in high school and what you're interested in studying in college. So there's a lot more that goes into it than you know, just sort of thinking of students in general and trying to fill to 350 students. So hopefully that helps. It's largely students in LSNA, so the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts, and kinesiology, or art, architecture, music, uh, and nursing. They provide because they have smaller cohorts of students. They have someone in their um, student service offices that provide additional support to students once you enroll. So again, LSNA and kinesiology. Engineering has a separate program that's voluntary that you can come to, um, so, but you're not taking college uh, credit-bearing coursework over the summer. Um, that's in MSI, MSTEM, sorry, MSTEM mm -hmm. is engineering, MSI is LSNA, so for the scientists. Uh, but you'll learn more about that in the weeks to come. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Um, yeah, my, my undergrad time passed, but my sister-in-law actually is going to uh, Michigan. Well, I'm sorry, has gotten into Michigan. But this question actually is for Caden specifically. So I know, based on PowerPoint, uh, you received the George Floyd Memorial Scholarship. So I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about your project. For my own curiosity, I think it's very unique. Um, and just your, pro your thought process um, that led you to be a recipient. Um, so the, I'm pretty sure that the prompt or what applicants had to do to apply was create a two minute video discussing how you use diversity or how um, diversity is important to you and how you use it like to implement it into your community. And so I made, I made that video and I just kind of discussed how all the things I was involved in in high school kind of all related to each other in the sense that I knew that um, the two most important identities to me were being black and being a woman. And so I was a part of the Black Latin Union in my high school, and I was um, I founded a club in my high school as well that was STEM focused for women and women of color. And so I just discussed those in the video, and I also talked about how the things I did outside of school also allowed me to just have a better understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion as a whole. And I discussed those in terms of like I did a lot of volunteer work in high school. And I, um, I did stuff with, uh, I'm sorry, I did things with professors here and at Eastern Michigan University. And so just bringing all those together and talking about those in kind of a way that, uh, where I was saying, I'm using all of these things to be more mindful, to be more knowledgeable, to be just a better citizen of the world. And I'm doing that here and I'm gonna do it at Michigan too. And that's what I hope they saw in my application Caden yeah. so, was our second recipient of the award and we'll be doing our third recipient this year. Any other questions? So it's exactly what Aaron Cassandra said. If you did not receive that offer, contact her directly or contact us and we'll get the information to her. And if there's space um, and if your, if your interests match up with what the program is providing, she will follow. Yeah, but he was admitted to her. Oh, he was yeah, admitted to her. Okay. You just need to tell us that you're coming. And because you're Wolverine Pathway Scholars and it's a tuition and Mary scholarship, you don't have to pay the enrollment deposit. You need to accept your offer of admission. So you need to go into your portal and check the box that you're accepting your offer. But you are not sending any fees. But it's going to look like you can if you have not done two things. Completed your FAFSA, yes ma'am, and CSS profile. 
because institutional dollars that you may not have been awarded at this time are still available to you. But if you don't turn in those two pieces, you won't get them. So it won't let, it won't illuminate, it won't let you basically say I'm coming because it's like, how would you know you're coming? You haven't gotten all of your money. Okay, so it's really important when you get to that portal, check your financial aid tab first. Make sure they have all of your documents, even if you're not in, but they're not gonna give me any money. You don't know. You could be in kinesiology, there could be a scholarship um, specifically for applied exercise science, which is your area of interest, and you may receive a scholarship. So again, please fill out the CSS profile in the FAFSA, then you're able to check the box, you submit no funds. If your thought is, that's interesting, we already submitted a check. You can send me an email. We will refund it. Or you can leave the money in your student account, and that will pay towards any other fees you may have once you enroll. So again, I don't think they have, they don't have phones in the residence halls anymore, right? You don't have landlines? Um, um, cable. Well, they have landlines, but I'm saying cable, whatever it is, whatever you might have it pays towards anything that might be in your account that's due. So you can leave it there, you've already paid it, or if you want the money back, let me know and we'll give it back. But you just need to accept your offer of admission. You have until May 1st to make that decision, but you can let us know earlier. That will allow housing to get you started with your housing applications, and you will have one application if you're in Bridge. You just need to do fall and winter. The summer, you get an assignment. All of you are together, so you don't have to make the selection of the kind of community you're looking for. The other piece is still the learning communities. Do you want the CSP learning community, or are you thinking of another learning community? And again, the learning communities are based upon your areas of academic interest, so there might be something else you're interested in that you might apply for for those learning communities. There's a brief short answer for some of those learning communities, but they're very generous. They're not expecting you to write a book, so it's not the application for admission. They just want to know of your interest and have you read anything about their program. That's all they're looking for. So please consider the Living Learning Programs. They're very important in helping you really continue to feel supported in your academic area of interest, and especially in some of the areas where, again, they're tied to curriculum around your area of interest, like the Health Science Scholars, and you'll feel very supported um, in your area of interest. So it's important that you think about that. But yes, no money. Select your admission by May 1st. If you pay, we'll send it back. And we'll discuss this really briefly when we get to the Wolverine Pathway Scholarship Agreement, but you must also complete the FAFSA and the CSS profile to get the scholarship agreement as well. Um, Office of Financial Aid, as per some of the meetings we've had, um, with you all, the CSS profile should have been submitted by March 31st. If you did not do it, you need to let us know, right? So if you did not complete your CSS profile by March 31st, you need to let us know. Any other questions? Okay, I want to do a quick, I want to make sure, she's been doing that teacher waiting time. All right, so we're just going to do some fire round questions, or some lightning round questions with our panelists, and then they're going to leave you with some words of advice and then we're going to transition to the next part of our program. So, fire around. Favorite place to study? Mason Hall, third floor, 12 a.m. Oh, Toronto. Toronto. I would say first semester for me was after your graduate library. This semester it's been uh, Tommy Shapiro. Okay. Going the other way, favorite place to eat? I gotta say, Markley, underrated. Wait, 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 wait. Any, any place. Your oh. favorite, whatever your favorite place to eat is. Oh, anywhere on campus? Anywhere. Okay. Well, off campus? You can say two places? Okay, in terms of like, okay, in terms of like restaurants on campus, I'm a big fan of Amos, honestly. Like, it's so good. And then off campus restaurants, gotta be Frida Petitas. <laughs> I was also gonna say Frida Petitas. <laughs> I was also gonna say Frida Petitas. So good. But for a dining hall, I would say my favorite place is North Carolina. My favorite dining hall is Markley. They have a build-your-own pizza station, a build-your-own burger station. That's why it's the best, because you can choose what's on there. And then also, in terms, I was also going to say Fruity Tito's. <laughs> 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 <laughs
Best, <laughs> best housing option. It's, an, it's your opinion, but it's going to be fact today. Apartments, check with friends. <laughs> oh, housing? Be an RA, uh, be my room, and four pay for. I've been an RA and also a diversity career educator, and it's, it's great to it's not have to. Oh, and Oxford, because you get your own bathroom. Oxford is like one of the smaller residence halls, but Oxford's good. Um, I say it depends on the year, what year you are, but um, I lived in an apartment my first year because my sister is a junior right now, so we live together. So I would say apartment, but for dorms, I would say any of the quads. Uh, for dorms, I remember Oxford. I lived in Oxford my freshman year. Small, personable, grateful, all that. And I was a fifth year senior. I've lived in apartments since I was a sophomore. I just moved to Ipsy this year because it's bigger, better apartments for half the price than it is in Ann Arbor. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, in the dorms, I live in Barclay. Um, a lot of people kind of hate on it, but I think it's great. It feels like a just really great social environment um, at Barclay. Really, at any of any of the dorms on the hill. Um, and in terms of off campus, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of just like of like living in a house with a bunch of guys, which is what I'm doing next year. So I'm pretty excited about that. Best place to release and unwind. Um, well, for me personally, I would say it's odd for the MLB, that's why I play club rehearsal. But in terms of like a place to relax, I like to go to the ARB, um, which is right by Mark, which is another bird that time. Yeah, so y'all remember I said I spent all my time in trouble. So once I'm finished with my homework and studying, we're in there relaxing, kicking, watching TV, playing cards, all that kind of stuff. That's, that's where I'm at to unwind all the time. I would also say charter. <laughs> My favorite place to take a nap is the fourth floor of the Michigan Union in the wellness zone. I'm in the massage chair. <laughs> like you're supposed to stay there for 15 minutes, but sometimes you know, it's a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite place would be on. Best place to get hyped and energized. <laughs> you're not getting hyped or energized. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many options. <laughs> Um, for me, I'm not a big like. I, I like to stay inside my dorm. I like to just like watch TV. I'm not a big type person. <laughs> I would also say the football stadium, but like, if you have, like, if you're if you're around the right people, like anywhere you go, specifically on weekends, because weekdays it's like strictly locking in. You gotta be focused on your school stuff. But on the weekend, if you're just with people that like you can have fun with, then that's the best place to. Um, I would say, you know, responsibly enjoy yourself at like a party. Uh, I'm, I'm with two orders who frequently throw like parties at clubs or houses. And, you know, we did house music last week. We've done a, like a Afro beat parties and all kind of parties. So that's where we like to, you know, kick it and have fun and get hyped and enjoy ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I got to say the big house for sure. I mean, come on. I think it's the obvious answer. So the last, your parting words uh, for these wonderful, hopefully soon to be uh, Wolverines. Anything, any insights, guidance, best advice you'd like to give them before we close the panel? And anybody can start. We got two mics. <laughs> um, I can start. Um, I would just say be confident in yourself. Like you got into the University of Michigan for a reason and that means a lot. It's, it's so easy to forget that when you have something that doesn't go your way. Like it's very easy to get discouraged, but just like remember like who you are um, and also I would say don't be afraid to advocate for yourself and like really like um, really stand up for your own learning that's really important like you know like, if you don't understand something go to office hours and really take initiative um, of that and also like really prioritize your health sleep diet exercise are so important and that's something that I wish I prioritized a little bit more like during my first year um, Definitely make sure that those like big three things are taken care of before you do anything else. Yeah, I can go. Um, my biggest piece of advice is to not be afraid to ask for help. I think that when you come here, there's like a big culture of being the leaders and the best, and you can fall into something of like you know, comparing yourself to others. Like, oh my gosh, this person has like two majors and two minors. It came. Um, but like I, it's just like they're like people just seem like they're doing a lot. They're involved in extracurriculars. They're involved in doing this and this. And just make sure you're, you know, just looking out after yourself. Go to office hours, like they said. 
look for all these resources. OM is a big one. Trotter, like all of these places are here for you to like take advantage of. Uh, my biggest piece of advice would be to find balance. I don't care what major you want to be here, whether it's you want to be in STD, you want to be stamps, you want to be in a STEM major, whatever it is, it's hard. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of study. It's a lot of homework and a lot of tests, papers, exams. You have to find that balance between your academics and your social life and then your alone time. You know, if you don't find that balance, you will burn out and you will burn out very fast. Oftentimes, like a lot of freshmen come here and they're not prepared for the difference that it is like from high school. Even if you went to a really strong academic high school, the workload here is 10 times that. And so you can't just come here like only focus on the school where you have to have that balance to stay sane because that's what will keep you here working consistently. You don't want to just put all the work into one semester, burn out, put in the work, burn out. You want to be able to work consistently until you graduate one time. Any other advice? Um, yeah, like Chris said, Michigan is a very, very hard school, and I unfortunately was a victim of that freshman, like thinking everything was sweet, and then at the end of the semester, it really wasn't. And I think my biggest piece of advice I would give to just avoid, avoid that is to like take advantage of everything that Michigan has to offer. And I think that what stopped me from doing that a lot in my first semester was thinking that I don't think anybody else is taking advantage. I don't think anybody else needs the help, so I should either I should be able to figure this all out by myself. But in reality, you're not supposed to be able to figure it, like anything out really by yourself, completely by yourself. And so I think just having that like sort sort of confidence in yourself that you're here for a reason and you wouldn't be here if you couldn't do it. You just have to really know that and really not let like how hard this school gets be like a factor in what you're able to do. Uh, my piece of advice would be that I tell you all that you belong here, all of you. There might be points, uh, there might be points in times when you're here on campus, whether it's like the day before an exam, you're stressed out, or you have to, or you came back, uh, some results came in with a uh, award or some workload that just didn't come out, the grades didn't come out the way you wanted them to, and you start having these moments of self doubt. But let me tell you something: mistakes happen, but the university accepting you here, that was not a mistake.
joy and excitement and happiness in the wonderful world of math. Math is a wonderful thing. Um, I majored in math in college and then I came to the U of M to get my math PhD. Uh, prior to joining WP, I was a classroom teacher. I taught for eight years uh, and I have experience at both the high school and college levels, including at the U of M math department. Uh, Michigan math, when you first encounter it, can hurt a little bit, hmm. or a little more than a little bit. <laughs> However, so the reason that Michigan math can hurt is when you first encounter it from high school, all of your trusty formulas and study strategies kind of don't work as well anymore. You need this much deeper level of understanding. So that when you take exams here, they stop looking like what you did in class, but rather you're looking at a new problem and you have to apply the things you saw in class in new and creative ways. And also one question can cover like multiple different areas. When you hear all this, this is when you think, oh, horror upon horrors, what am I gonna do? So one thing you can do, uh, one resource that I am personally so excited to offer is WP Math Office Hours. Um, so the thing about office hours, a lot of students when they first come to college kind of don't quite understand what they are or think they're one thing. Uh, one thing a lot of students think is I have to have a question or a whole sheet of nicely written questions and then I wait in line and then maybe eventually it gets to me and my professor writes one thing on my paper and I go home. Uh, it is not like that. So, fact one, we are going to be writing on boards in chalk. Chalk is a wonderful, mythical thing. It makes you smarter, and you have all these ideas that you never would have had before. Um, in addition to this, we will work together. Math is very much a team sport. Um, and so you can bring homework questions, exam questions, other wonderings, but that is just one thing that you can do. It is also a space where we can discuss math together. You can work with me and with other WP people. Um, and in addition to this, even if you don't quite know where to start, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're like, I can't even begin to formulate a question. That is okay, show up. We will figure out where you are at. We will start from there. If you don't have questions for me, I will have questions for you. We will work together and it'll be wonderful. So when you come on campus, I hope that you will, that you'll be students here. I will email you, I will text you, come work with me, I am so excited for this. However, because you've heard it all from me, it sort of doesn't count unless you hear it from another student. And so I would like to introduce you via this presentation to a wonderful student of mine, Ryan. Ryan enjoys math office hours so much that he comes every single week. We have done wonderful math together, and he will talk to you about his experience. Hello, I'm Ryan Montgomery. I'm a student at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor. I'm in my first year, and I graduated from Northern Class of Ways in 2022. Um, I'm here at the university, and I'm taking Calc 115, which is displayed back here. Um, I'm seek, I seek out uh, Wolverine Pathways office hours uh, to help my math skills. Before coming here, I, I mean, I was just, I was just struggling pretty much. Um, I wasn't really that strong in math. I mean, I had the foundation, but Michigan math is, it requires me to think conceptually and not just with formulas. And that was a big adjustment for me. So coming here, uh, I literally just got a text and it said something about Wolverine Pathways Office Hours. And I was like, okay, well, let me try this. And I tried it and I absolutely love it. So if you're ever, you know, struggling here at the University of Michigan, please see Wolverine Pathways Office Hours because they are so helpful and I, I just don't know where I can Thank you. Rodrigo, um, one of our panelists, has also been to Wolverine Pathways Math Office Hours and share his insights. Yeah, so my time taking uh, take Wolverine Pathways Office Hours with Laura has been very helpful to me, helpful to me. And what I really enjoy while, um, while discussing math with her is that she doesn't just spoon feed you uh, the answers. Um, 
she actually helps you uh, try to understand it to a point where you work it out and you have that satisfaction of knowing that you learned it and you can apply it again and again uh, outside of just office jobs and it's thanks to her. So I hope some of you will take advantage of it. Often math is the thing that gives our scholars the most heebie-jeebies in terms of the transition and this is a support that will be available to you in addition to all the wonderful supports um, already mentioned. We're gonna, we're pretty much almost finished and so I wanna give, introduce you all at this point to both, to talk a little, do some highlights with regards to the scholarship agreement and also some things with regards to the uh, George Floyd Memorial Scholarship. So we've sort of already given you a window into some of the things that you get as a part of the scholarship. So clearly, everyone gets a full four-year tuition scholarship plus fees to the University of Michigan. If you are required to attend Bridge or Summer CSP this uh, coming summer, you also will receive an additional term of tuition and fees funding, um, assuming you have met all the other requirements consistent with getting funding and the Office of Financial Aid will indicate what else you have to do. So for example, you have to complete another FAFSA for this academic year. Um, OWAMI and Success Connects have already outlined the ser services and supports you will get. So the group mentoring, the one-on-one -on -one coaching, the educational and professional programming, and community building activities. And so that's all the stuff you will be getting. In terms of what we want you to give back um, and what you're expected to do as part of the scholarship is basically we want you to take advantage of what Success Connects provides. What we know is our scholars who have maximized the services of Success Connects have transitioned better, have found community, have found balance, social and mental, and so we are trying to uh, attach you and create motivation for you to take advantage of these resources. And so meet regularly with your Success Connects coach. We have approximately one time per month, but you and your Success Coach will work that through in terms of what is best for you. But more time is better than less time. Just for someone to know you, figure out when you need assistance, and sort of is keeping you on their radar of support and connection. Um, the strategies workshops, which will change and vary from one year to the next, but again, all aimed in supporting your success. Um, we look forward to welcome you formally when you get here in the fall. And so this is a big event to welcome you, feed you, allow you to convene with each other, and we want to see you there if you join. We want you to reach back, and this is the question um, the father was asking us earlier. We may not even host enough events to allow all of you to give back in this way, but we're hoping that though that you will give back at some point and in some way. And of course we excuse you if we're not hosting enough events, but we want you to potentially be available to us and therefore available to the next round of Wool Green Pathway Scholars going forward. So that means hopefully you come to one of our events, right? We have orientation for our new scholars. They want to see you. The panelists who join here, this counts as their one event uh, for the year. You might want to come to an alumni celebration where we're saying congratulations on graduating from the University of Michigan. Go forth and do good because you've already, you're already amazing. So ways to be a part of our community and to generate the connections you need to thrive and to support the incoming. So in terms of recruitment events, who else could talk about the benefits of uh, Will Green Pathways as students who've gotten through our program and made it to Michigan? And so that might mean we just we want you to get online because we're doing an online um, recruitment event and we want you there. Maybe we're going back to your high school and you're the best one to talk to the young people in your high school who are thinking about the program. Maybe we're going back to your middle school. And what we'll do is we'll push out opportunities and say, you know, we know you went to Renaissance, or you went to Cesar Chavez, we're going to Cesar Chavez, do you have time to join us on that event? Those are the kinds of things we're inviting you to do with us. Um, 
This is sometimes a hard one for young people, particularly because they are busy. We want you to check for emails from us for these very invitations, and for also, because sometimes we're sharing opportunities for you. I was, I was struck by one of our students who was interested in business. We, we were partnering with the Greenwood Foundation, which works to diversify the field of finance and consulting. Um, and we sent out this opportunity, said, you know, they're looking for candidates for their internship. Only one of our scholars applied. Most of them didn't open the email, never read it, didn't know the opportunity existed. This young man applied. He found himself training in Chicago in the finance field for $25 an hour. He then got a placement in a New York City firm for $50 an hour, right? He was the only one that read the email, replied to the email, and took advantage of the program. So I know email is kind of archaic for your generation, but the university still relies seriously on email. So just keep an eye out for communications for us. It's both for opportunities and it's also for giving back. And we do try to figure out how to be better and do better every year. And that's why we ask you to complete um, annual surveys, both for Wolverine Pathways and for Success Connects. Um, and that's critical because what we learn about how you're doing, how you're faring, what's working, what's not working, not only can inform the university as a whole about how to do better, but it also helps us think about what other supports and resources can we build into our program. So we're not annoying you for annoying sake. We really need that knowledge and information so that we continue to serve students like yourself to the best of our ability, and the university also be, it continues to serve students like you to the best of our ability. Um, and to secure the, the, the Wolverine Pathway Scholarship, there's basically three things you have to do. You have to complete your FAFSA, which many of you hopefully have already done. Um, you have to complete the CSS profile. The Office of Financial Aid expects you to do that, do that by March 31st. If there's some reason you have not done that, you need to let me know or another staff member know. I definitely recommend coming to me because it's a centralized place and we'll uh, talk that through. And then finally, you have to sign the scholarship agreement. You have a hard copy in your folder uh, for your immediate reference, but our data manager will be sharing an electronic copy, copy before next week, Friday, so you can sign online. Um, and you have to sign it by May 5th. So commitment day is May 1st. So by then you have to tell the university whether you're coming or not. Send it to us by May 5th. We then pass it over to Office of Financial Aid. And if everything else is copacetic, your um, scholarship will be secure. The last thing, the George Floyd Memorial Scholarship through generous donations from alumni, we've been able to field the scholarship. As you all know, George Floyd was murdered after being under the, the knee of a police officer for nine minutes. This is to honor his life and to also uh, recognize the fight for social justice that his death, his murder, inspired. And consistent with what you learned from Caden, it's an opportunity to support WP alum who have demonstrated a commitment to bettering their community through social justice. And students who have been admitted to the U of M and have committed to come are eligible to apply uh, for this scholarship. It's a $2,000 scholarship. It's distributed over your first year. You get $1,000 for the first term of attendance and a second thousand for the second term of attendance. I had this file up when Caden was speaking, but Claire, with the, what you have to demonstrate in your application is a commitment to enhancing either um, the WP community, the school, the school, your school, or your neighborhood in some way, or even your city. Um, you should have demonstrated exemplary, exemplary leadership skills and involvement in public service or civic activities, and you potentially um, had perseverance in overcoming some form of diversity. And Caden already indicated a video was required, and another part of the application is you just need to submit to us the community essay from your U of M Ann Arbor application as well. We encourage you to be creative. You can do animation. You can do it. You can integrate video and I mean um, integrate photos and the like into your video, but the creativity and your ability to tell.
tell a really compelling story around these things will be part of the evaluation. When and how to apply? Before the end of April, every student who's been admitted to the University of Michigan will receive an invitation to apply, the link to the application as well, and the application will be due sometime in June. Any questions before we conclude? Because I know it's been a super long day for y'all. some brochures that we'll pass out shortly and the brochure has the QR code to direct you to our website and there's a short registration form to fill out. Um, it's not an application, anyone who fills out the form is part of the program and then their coach will be assigned to them and reach out to them at the very beginning of the fall semester. Any other questions? I know it was a long day, um, but hopefully you're energized about the prospect of coming here in the fall. Um, you're a pretty special group. This was another groundbreaking year of an application to the U of M. As Erica indicated, you know, upwards of 90,000 applications, only 7,000 odd seats. Um, and so you are really a very special group. And so I just want to say, let's give you all a round of applause. <laughs> if you all have any remaining questions from today, whether it's questions related to me, or someone from Office of Undergraduate Admissions, or someone from Success Connect, do not hesitate to reach out. We are a Wolverine Pathways family, and even if you don't decide to come here, you will forever be a part of the Wolverine Pathways family, and we will continue to reach out to you to make resources and opportunities available. We're in fact hiring a graduate of our program to serve as our, what's our program? The graduate of our program who graduated from college, ideally the University of Michigan campus, to serve as an alumni fellow, um, to support our relations with alumni. So we're really gonna um, amp up our relationships with alumni to make sure that we continue to keep you a part of the fold. So congratulations, uh, rest, uh, rejuvenate, and I know this is a long weekend, um, and hopefully a pleasurable weekend for all of you. Thank you so much.